because eventually they will apologize to us. I've been saying it for years now that all these preachers attacking us, they will apologize. There's an apology. Let's let's dwell on that. Okay. There's an apology uh, that came from uh, Pastor Enoch Adeboy of Redeemed Church, uh, Christian Church of God, just a few days ago. Okay. Uh, apologizing for saying that from the pulpit, two millions of people. That if you do not, if you not, if you don't give your tithe, you're not qualified to go to heaven. You're not going to make it to heaven. So now he's come out to apologize. And I was checking it out on social media and some of the conversations around there, your name was trending. And some of the conversations around there was like, hey, 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 no, you must go and apologize to Dr. Ebel Damina. <laughs> Have they tried to reach out to you in any way? Because they do owe you an apology. Oh, Solo, I'm trying to stay away from that conversation. <laughs> no, we have to. Now, we have of, to dwell around. The truth of the matter is, when I first had him say, if you don't pay your tithe, you will not go to heaven full stop. Yeah. Anyone who is not paying his tithe is not going to heaven full stop. I'm going to be apologizing for making a mistake. For saying that if you don't pay tight, you, you might not make it to heaven. I'm sorry, that's wrong. That's not in the Bible. I screamed. Wow. I screamed from my pulpit. I said, How? I said, You people say we are, we are attacking Christianity. You people say we are attacking the fathers. Okay, you people say we are preaching a gospel that make people sin because we say what Christ did was complete. And you have not yet called out somebody who said, if you don't pay tithe, you will not make heaven. I think that's the first person you people should be calling out, which means tithe replaces Christ. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his okay. only begotten son, mm. that whosoever believes in him should not perish, not whoever pays tithe. So right. I got loud on that. Right. And people's eyes began to open. Right. So when, 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 when he apologized, for me, that was a step in the right direction. For me, that was something, you know, that was a statement that mm. was very weighty, mm. at least for whatever is what. Yeah. People are able to know that, okay, there is truth in what I said and other people have said yeah. concerning the tithe. Yeah. Tithe in no way is a prerequisite to anything in God, yeah. in no way at all. Somebody said, what about Malachi chapter 3? Well, Malachi chapter 3 was not written to you. It was written to the priest who were receiving tithe, but were not paying the tithe of tithe. Mm. So Malachi said to them, you guys, you priests, you are cursed to meet a curse. Mm. It wasn't given to us. But even if it was given to the, the, the Christians, Galatians 3 eradicates Malachi. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Yeah. He made a curse for us, for it is written. Cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. Mm. Christ has sorted all that out. Mm. So that's why in the New Testament it says, God loves a cheerful giver. Yeah. The New Testament says, if a man giveth according to what he has, it is acceptable. There are no hard rules on it. Mm. It's just generosity. And I always say this, when you see Jesus, money loses value. Mm. When you really see Jesus, mm. Jesus is on a donkey to Jerusalem. And people saw Jesus on the donkey right. and began to bring out their jewelry, their gold, and they put it on the ground. Mm. Because you can't really see Jesus and money. You cannot serve God and mammon, yeah. but you can serve God with mammon. When you see Jesus and you see his love, you see what he has done for you, his grace, his mercy. You want to promote what he has done for you so other people can also benefit from right. it. Right. So generosity is natural. I always say to people, people think I preach against giving. No. I preach against transaction. Yes. You cannot be a child of God and not be a giver. Yeah. For God so loved the world that he gave. If it is in God's character to give, it means if you're born of God, in your DNA is the desire to give, mm -hmm. but not manipulated mm -hmm. giving, yeah. not fear-based giving, yeah. not transactional giving, mm -hmm. but giving out of generosity, expecting nothing in return. Yeah. Somebody says to me, so what is the benefit of my giving? The benefit of my giving is that when I give, what I give for is done. If I gave for you to go to school, you went to school. That's my reward. Right. That through my giving, you went to school. So the beneficiary of my giving is not me. Mm. The beneficiary of my giving is the person to whom I gave it to. Mm. And that's my reward for giving. Mm. You know, so, yeah. and, and, and that is shifting the whole narrative. Yeah. Yeah. It's shifting it. And yeah. we're going to get more louder. Yeah. Because that whole thing has to give way. Now, the, the point is this. When I got into the Pentecostal Charismatic and I started preaching, all we do about money was tithe. 
and then seed. Yeah. And then the prosperity thing came in. And then we were taught that if you don't pay your tithe, the virus will come. You. And we believed it because, I mean, and then we preached it and some people who tithe had some results. So that authenticated it for them. Yeah. So we stayed yeah. in it. Yeah. But when I finally began to study the Bible in the light of Christ, and I began to look into the scriptures, Old Covenant, New Covenant, and the, the, the ministry of today is the ministry of the New Testament, who has made us able ministers of the New Testament, mm. not of the later. Mm. For the later kill it, but the Spirit give it life. Right. Mm. So if the, the ministry is the ministry of the New Testament, was there fighting in the book of Acts? Because New Testament started in the book of Acts. Yeah. There was no tithing. Nobody preached it. Not Paul, not Peter, not James, not John, not mm. even Jesus. Mm. Something about in Matthew 23, Jesus spoke about tithe. No, he was indicting the Pharisees. He said, you guys have read the weightier matters of the law. So tithing is of the law. Weightier matters of the law, like mercy, compassion. And you're emphasizing on the lighter matters of the law, which is tithe. He was rebuking them. He wasn't endorsing it. So which means tithing and all of that were matters of the law. Mm. Because Galatians chapter 4 verse 4, the Bible tells us that when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Mm. So Jesus operated under the law in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because in Matthew 5, 17, Jesus said, do not think that I am come to destroy the law. I am not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. Now the word fulfill means I have come to meet the demands of the law that men could not meet. So Jesus met the demands of the law and took the law out of the way. Because the law was not given to the world. It was given to the Jews who were on their way from Egypt to the promised land. Those are the people Moses gave the laws to. Because the laws are not for Gentiles. But Jesus took it out of the way and gave us a new and living way. Right. So the New Testament started in the book of Acts. No tithing. What did they have? generosity. Mm -hmm. People sold land yeah. and houses and, they shared and brought everything them. and they shared to take care of yeah. people's needs in yeah. the church, which is the love work. Mm -hmm. That was the emphasis of the New Testament. So I began to teach this in my church. So tithing stopped and everything stopped. Mm -hmm. We couldn't afford to pay our, for our TV station, so we shut down our TV station. Mm -hmm. We couldn't even pay staff salaries, so we had to keep just a few send orders away and apologize to them. And then I told my family, I said, guys, it's no more business as usual. Mm. We have to downsize. I began to teach them contentment because that's what the gospel of Christ brings. Right. It brings contentment. <laughs> the other gospel brings greed, greed avarice. Mm. You want to get more. The more you get, the more you want to yeah. get. The more you get, the yeah. more you want to get. And like I've always said, all the prosperity preachers are the only beneficiaries of that gospel mm -hmm. because everybody gives to them and they give to nobody else. They keep collecting. And even if they give, it is because they intend to use that as a bait to collect a bigger more. one. Yeah. So it's a selfish gospel, and yeah. that's not the gospel Christ brought to us. The gospel Christ brought for, to us is that, you know, he that loveth his life shall lose it. Yeah. He that loseth his life shall gain it. Yeah. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. That's the gospel Christ brought to us. Yeah. He said, he has died for us, leaving an example for us that we should follow in his steps. Yeah. For the Son of Man came not to be ministered to, but to minister and give his life a ransom for many. Mm -hmm. And then Paul will say, seeing that Christ died for us, henceforth we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Yeah. That's the New Testament. <laughs> okay, but in the mm -hmm. tithing team, the tithing message is all about give, 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 give. Mm -hmm. And the man of God keeps collecting it. Mm -hmm. And then they, they scare you with fear and manipulation. Mm -hmm. If you don't pay your tithe, things will be tight. Mm -hmm. If you don't pay your tithe, the virus will come. If you don't pay your tithe, you, your business will collapse. If you don't pay your tithe, and out of manipulation, people in fear, a pain type. Yeah. And I did that in my church. Yeah. But watch this. When I began to teach the truth, everybody in church stopped tithing and stopped giving. Mm. So I went to God in prayer and I said, God, is there something I have done that is not right? And then the Lord said to me, they never gave to me. Why they, were they giving? They gave to their fear. They were not giving to God. The fear they factor. were giving to the fear. Yeah. So when they discovered there's nothing to fear anymore, the true intent of their heart was exposed. They never give again. So there's a lot of fear transmission from the pulpit on the Sunday morning when talking about giving and tithing. Yeah. There's a lot of fear that is transmitted to you the You cannot of get it from the people if you don't inflict them with fear. So fear is a major, major element around this whole prosperity That's what gospel. the prosperity gospel sells. It thrives on fear. You don't sow, you can't get. And it, it, it's character assassination on God. 
because God now is projected as a businessman. Right. It's a transaction. Yes, a mm-hmm. transactionary gospel yeah. where you have to give to get, to give to get. Mm-hmm. And then even the prayers they pray is transactionary. You, you sow, you can't give a prayer because you don't have money. You must put money on it. Yeah. Because God will not answer the prayer if there's no money attached. Mm. So it's still part of this, the scam. Right. I call it a scam. It's a scam. You know? Start to finish. And that's what it is. A lot of them it, are scams. It's a scam. Yeah. So, and, and the, the, the gullible followers who don't know better think when you speak about it, you're being envious of their pastors. Yeah. But, you know, their eyes will open eventually. Right. And they will come to terms because no matter how long falsehood lasts, mm-hmm. the truth will overtake yes. it eventually. Yeah. So we, we, won't, we will not be bullied by their reactions mm-hmm. and stop saying what we know is yeah. the truth. You, let me be honest with you. There are pastors in Africa. If you take giving money, tightening out of ministry, they will no more do ministry. I, I can tell you preach. that for free. They will get out of ministry. Mm. Because some are in it as a business. Yeah. They a see like, okay, yeah. now, you know, I am through with school, no jobs in the secular world, God has called me. Then they start their church without even sound Bible training. Mm. They begin to abuse scriptures, mm. teach scriptures out of context, twist things around. Mm. Some will say, I'm a prophet. Mm. I'm beginning to see visions and all that. And they use that as a means of making money. Let me tell you this, uh, Uncle Solomon. If I never came after the titan and the transactional gospel, nobody will persecute me. Nobody will attack me. The attacks really started mm. when I started talking against the transactional gospel. Now, God is a father. He's not a businessman. So why is that? Because that is what many people are in need for. It's a whole industry. A lot of your friends? Well, my friends, some of them don't want to talk to me anymore, but I don't <laughs> They didn't call me. And uh, mm. when I leave this world, I'm not going to go to them. And a lot of people that you know. Because, I mean, you know. I lost quite. But I made up my mind that I was going to, I was ready to lose because Jesus said, if I am your Lord and I was persecuted, mm. if you preach, you'll be persecuted. Mm. Now look at it. When I was preaching the transactional prosperity gospel, nobody persecuted me. Yeah. You were loved. Everywhere. Yeah. I mean, I can call names, all the big names. Yeah. I was hanging out with they them. Invite you. Everywhere. Come preach. The moment I started preaching, Christ is enough. Christ is more than enough. The death, burial, and the resurrection as my emphasis. Then persecution started coming. So which means, I'm in the right path. Mm, mm. Because if Christ was persecuted and I'm preaching and I'm persecuted, I must be. And I've said to preachers, if what you're preaching does not attract persecution, we examine the content of your message. You're throwing it too much there. Yes. If you're, you're, not attract, if you're not persecuted yeah. for what you're preaching, yeah. you need to go back and re-examine the content of your message because you can't be holier and better than Jesus. Mm. Jesus was persecuted. The 12, how did they die? Some of them were yeah. butchered. Some yeah. of them for the gospel. Crucified and then you down. are preaching gospel. And you're buying cars, jets. You're living big. You're Everybody having a good life. You. People love you. Mm-hmm. Everywhere you are a star. <laughs> Something no doesn't add up. No way. Something doesn't add up. If they were persecuted for this same gospel, yeah. people died for this same gospel. Missionaries came to preach to us and died for this same gospel. Mm. The rich left yeah. their wealth to come and preach this same gospel. Mm. And you are preaching it right. These symptoms, all of these mm. characteristics will be seen around you. Persecution, rejection, you know, attacks, black males. People will come out against you. Mm. Because Satan will not fold his hand and what you do in the right thing, he will attack. So if you are preaching, if you are a pastor or a man of God or a woman of God, and I think if you are watching this, this broadcast, wherever right. you are, right. get more pastors, as mm. many pastors, especially young pastors and believers who, are, who have been disgruntled, people that are put out of church. Mm. Let me tell you this, on my way to South Africa, mm. I stopped by, you know, uh, somewhere I, because I, I did a connection flight. When I got in the lounge, a lady just saw me walk to me and said, Dr. Damina, and I said, yes. She, she may be watching this. She said, I wish I listened to you before I left Christianity. I said, I've just been telling my husband that I wish I listened to you before I left Christianity. Mm. I'm no more a Christian. I said, why? She said, these things you are preaching and exposing yeah. now were the things I questioned and nobody answered. Oh. So I felt Christianity is a hoax, is a scar. Yeah. I yeah. left. But now, then I started listening to you. I'm not a Christian, mm. but I don't stay away from listening. Mm. And I want to keep listening. And I want us to establish a contact. I'm a journalist, she yeah. said. And then I gave her my number. And then, you know, we started chatting and all that. But the point is, I've come across many people. Uncle Solomon, I can tell you this for free. Mm. Many all over the world, even Muslims, who said, you know, in Islam, we know that there's Christ, but we don't have teachings. Yeah. So now we're hearing you teach Christ, Christ, Christ. We're interested. So we follow you because we want to really know about this Isa, this Christ. Yeah. We yeah. want to learn of him. Yeah. 
and a lot of them are following me. Mm. And they say, I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say it. Yeah. I'm learning Christ from you. Mm. And people are coming, even traditional worshippers. Even people that are called atheists, yes, you know, they, they are coming yes, back to say, yes. hey, questions we asked in church and nobody answered. What you're preaching is answering my question, so I want to hear more. Mm. Because Jesus is the desire of all nations, yes. all men seeking. Yeah. And if we preach him well, mm. the whole world will come to this knowledge. Mm.